Ok. It's going to be a tough job after lunch. I'm going to hopefully keep you awake. No promises. Uh, okay, uh, today's session uh, is about BIM performance assessment. Uh, there's a lot to discuss. Uh, this is, uh, gives you an indication of some of the things I'm going to cover, but I'm going to cover them very, very quickly. So we're going to go through what is BIM performance assessment, what is um, you know benefits of organization assessment, um, how to structure the assessment, and we're going to look at a couple of assessment methods that you may find beneficial. So, so I'm hoping that this uh, session would be a little bit different to what you've listened to, all the good presentations uh, that you've heard before. So this is a little bit uh, different. This looks, if you want, post-BIM, uh, post-implementation and how would we really understand if an organization um, has uh, implemented BIM in the right way. It gives you a couple of tools and methods for you to use in um, establishing whether an organization is at a high level of capability or not. And uh, two methods I'm going to introduce for you today, something called staged, another one called continuous. So I'm just going to go f directly into it. Um, there's some kind of uh, glitch there. So, introduction. What is BIM performance? Uh, so, quickly, BIM performance is a term um, which includes lots of metrics. So, when we say BIM performance on its own without defining it, uh, really we don't understand anything. We, we, we're not really sure what are we discussing. So, I'm going to introduce a few of these metrics. Uh, we can't, of course, cover them in detail today, but just quickly. So we're looking at all these uh, metrics that uh, looks at the you know, availability, deliverables of individuals, organizations, projects, and teams. I'm hoping later on you will have uh, access to these uh, slides. I'm not going to focus on very specific things. So what are the benefits of organization assessment? I'm going to use here a term called competency assessment, which is different to capability maturity. So there are many, many benefits of competency assessment. Uh, training with, you know, to, to identify, mostly really to have a clear picture of uh, the availability and distribution of competencies of individuals. Uh, also, when we're looking at capability maturity, another term, we look at uh, if there's any bottlenecks within a, a company, um, an organization, uh, or there's untapped potential, or there's any gaps that need to be um, filled. So how do you structure an organizational assessment? There's many, many, many ways. I'm just going to cover a couple of things, but before we do that, uh, um, um, these are the types of things that we typically measure. So you've got here on the left, whom, what to assess. You've got the single individual, you know, the person, the team of individuals. You've got organizational unit, the whole enterprise. Each, each one of these you know, are different. Uh, it is different. So. Uh, they have different metrics, and on the, on the right, you have all these metrics, competency, compatibility, capability, maturity, compliance, etc. Uh, for today, I'm just going to focus on uh, these terms, competency, capability, maturity, and when we're looking at project itself on the metrics, something called richness. So, one way of uh, structuring an assessment is to, um, through some kind of hierarchy. So we look at an organization or an enterprise as made of all these multiple uh, smaller organizational units. So look at that puzzle at the top. So imagine this is an enterprise with a, you know, a branch in Barcelona, another one in Madrid, another, a third one in, in Melbourne. And we want to assess or we want to establish the performance of this organization. We can't just look at it as a whole. We have to you know, break it down into its individual units. So we look at each branch separately. That's one way of doing it. And in each branch, we look at several metrics, organizational systems, the competency of individuals, and uh, the performance as based on projects. So another way of looking at it, if we look at, uh, you know, we structure this assessment based on business streams. So you could have uh, one uh, for infrastructure, another one for um, uh, mining. Does it, each each uh, company is different. But it's very important that before we start an assessing, assessing an organization, which is the focus of our um, you know, you know, discussion today, is that we ha have to have a structure. So this is another type of structure. We can assess by business line and then combine these assessments into the enterprise. Assessment methods, um, I'm going to introduce two of these uh, methods. Uh, one's called staged, 
Another one is called continuous. There's, uh, both of them are good. They, they have their own strengths and weaknesses. Um, the major difference between these two is that a stage assessment will have a fixed target. So you are measuring against a fixed target. While the continuous assessment, it's a moving target. And I'll explain what that is in a second. One is easy to implement, and I'm going to give you uh, links to templates that you can download and use uh, freely. While the continuous is a little bit harder and needs a little bit more uh, uh, specialized tools. So let's look at uh, staged method. Now, you, you know, of course, uh, this diagram uh, covered by uh, Mark before, and it's one of the most famous diagrams, uh, which is uh, the UK BIM levels, which are really, uh, in my, my book, they are more like compliance milestones. So a company can comply with uh, UK level two or three in the future. Um, while uh, there's another metric I use for performance milestones, which is measuring against the capability of an organization. Things that you, there's metrics that we can use to measure. We're going to focus, of course, not on compliance in this session, we're looking at performance. So, in, measure, in, in looking at uh, performance, there's a couple of metrics I want to introduce. Um, one is called capability stages, another one called maturity levels. So, please remember when I use the term maturity and maturity level, has nothing to do with the UK BIM levels, okay? So what are these uh, capability stages? Really, it is about uh, saying that um, these are the performance milestones uh, that can be achieved by organizations and teams. So we're looking at performance milestones, things that we can measure, and actually they, they refer to the minimum ability of an organization. The things that we can detect in an organization and we can measure to say that these are at a certain capability, BIM capability. So it is, it is just simply saying that it is impossible to go from pre-BIM, you know, the status before BIM, you know, from CAD and sketching, to something really highly integrated, something that integrates all the mechanical, all the structural, you know, all the benefits from all the, the data and links to all other databases. It is impossible. And if anyone will say that they are directly jumped from pre-BIM to this, you will know that there's something suspicious about the, that claim. Actually. All organizations you know, uh, pass through a, a staged approach. It doesn't have to use the same naming I'm going to use, but they go through a certain uh, uh, approach as they go from pre-BIM to what I call uh, post-BIM. So from pre-BIM, there's these three stages, and there's post-BIM. So you've got, I'm going to cover um, these just quickly. So object-based modeling is when a company starts to use you know, uh, software like uh, Revit, Archicad, uh, Tecla, etc., but they're doing it on their own. Uh, model-based collaboration when these companies uh, start to exchange these uh, models, uh, but the relationship between them is one-to-one. -one. And the third is network-based integration. This is where there is some kind of network, uh, some kind of software as a service, uh, a model server that helps integrate all these models together and uh, to share the data. And there's something very important, it's something called post-BIM. Uh, some of the things we heard today, really, I, I would classify them as post-BIM. This is where there's no longer a need for a model, and all our focus would be on data. I can't cover this in detail, but let's say that we have pre-BIM, before BIM, and there's something coming after BIM. BIM is not the end of the uh, improvement in, in the performance of the organization or the industry. Um, there are steps to go, of course, from pre-BIM to modeling, from modeling, uh, to collaboration, from collaboration to integration, and then to uh, post-BIM. Many of these things are published. You know, they are uh, in academic journals. They are available on, on, on my blog. Uh, there's videos. Uh, there's, uh, some of this material has already been translated into Spanish, Italian, um, French. Now we're working on German, Arabic, and I don't know what. Uh, so, um, and, uh, so please uh, feel free to um, uh, go and have a look. So that's the first metric, capability, which is the minimum ability. So I, I can look at a, at, a, at a company and say, what is its minimum ability? Are they still at modeling? They're still modeling without collaborating? Or are they collaborating? They're exchanging these models? Okay. Or are they integrating these models together? Okay. But on its own, it doesn't really tell you the quality of these, you know, of this modeling or the collaboration or the integration. That's why we need another metric. We need to apply it on these capability stages, and we refer to these as maturity levels. And maturity re levels is really refers to the excellence in the performance of, uh, of an organization. So whether uh, these deliverables are of high quality, and are they repeatable? Meaning, of course, you can work with an organization. They will give you beautiful uh, uh, 
deliverables, but let's say the next time you work with them, they give you less than good uh, deliverables. So really, when we're discussing maturity, we are discussing a kind of uh, quality, a repeatability, and because of repeatability, you, you, you get predictability. So when an, a client works with an engineer, uh, and w which has uh, you know, high maturity, uh, it means that the deliverables are predictable. We can tell that they will be at high quality. So these are the five <coughs> maturity levels. It goes from ad hoc, or just initial, there's no real maturity. They just have the minimum ability, so they can generate models. Uh, they can train their people, we can look at that. Then they go to defined, which is they have these processes defined, they are written down. We can look at them, we can see if uh, rather than they train people when they ask them to, there is a certain uh, process written down who should receive training on, on what topics. And we've got to managed. There is someone taking care of this uh, process for all these uh, different areas of capability, integrated when all these things are you know, joined together, and then optimize continuous improvement. Uh, this is too much really to, to get to, to understand uh, in, in such a short session, so I really invite you to look at some of the published works. Again, to move between these different maturity levels, we've got uh, these areas uh, between them, which also we can measure. Again, more videos, um, more translations. A template, um, uh, there is a template, you can download it in English, it's also available in Portuguese. Hopefully in the future we'll also through some of our partners to, to have uh, that available for you uh, for Spanish, in Spanish and other languages. Please feel free to use that, and I know many companies that uh, use that internally to assess their own capability uh, maturity. Again, once you have these metrics, uh, you can generate charts. So this is just a sample of these charts. You can generate your own charts by measuring the capability within a unit uh, and then the maturity. Now, looking at a completely different um, method, which is the continuous method. Uh, as a reminder, we said that the staged method, we are, let's say, measuring, if we're measuring for compliance, we can look at the company and say, are they compliant uh, with uh, UK level two or in the future UK level three? We can measure that by measuring against its comp you know, the components within that level. Uh, do they follow PASS 1192-2? Do, do they follow the security uh, protocols, etc.? Or if we're, we're measuring not compliance performance, we can measure them if they are modeling, they're collaborating, etc., and at what level of maturity. When it comes to continuous method, we, we have really three steps. We have first established the, the current status. We have to assess the current status of an organization. We have to define a future target, and then we have to identify the best uh, route to get there. And this is the best route, not the shortest route, and there's a bit of a difference between them. Meaning, if we want to assess a company uh, uh, using the continuous method, we don't really look at capability stages. We do not look at uh, something like the UK uh, levels. We look at their own targets or the targets of their client. Where, do they, where they are at the moment, we can assess that, establish something called a profile, and then we can assess where they, they want to go you know, as a company, or as if the client says to them, I want you to deliver that project, that project becomes a target, we can identify what that is, and then we measure their, uh, their performance and see what the gaps are. Once we establish what the gaps are, we can fill them. Now, very important difference between the two types of assessment is that this type of assessment needs something called inventories. You need to have something to measure against. You need actually hundreds and thousands of these competency items that we need in order to establish the current competency and to establish a target. So I'll give you a, a couple of examples. Uh, there's something called the competency items inventory. This is a large list of, um, what, you know, uh, of abilities. So what does a structure engineer need? What are the competencies needed from a, from a structure engineer or an architect or a facility manager or you know, an employer owner? We can identify what these are. And another type of inventory is the model uses inventory, which uh, really is uh, focused on assessing projects. Give you quick examples of both. So this on the left here, you see the competency items. There is a, a, a large list of items. Uh, for example, this is a typical uh, competency item, maintain uh, BIM models or uh, generating using um, standardized protocols. Um, just to give you an example, all, all professions have um, either common competencies 
or unique competencies. So when we say BIM, there's certain things that every profession and every specialty need to have, okay, which we can define, but there are also things that are specific to a structural engineer or quantity surveyor or whoever, or facility manager. And by having these listed and measure people against them, we can see if they have the, the ability or they don't have the ability. Uh, on, the, on the right side, uh, here you see the model uses, which is really, if you want to describe a project, how do you describe it and measure against it? You need something uh, that uh, as a deliverable. And this uh, I refer to as model uses, like asset maintenance, and asset tracking, etc. cetera. Uh, this is based on research as a framework. It's published. Please have a look. Um, so these are just a couple of uh, tools and templates. So this is a, a tool I've developed called the BIM Excellence, and it measures the competency of individuals against uh, a metric called the Individual Competency Index, also published. So this is a competency on the left, and there's a measurement. Uh, there's another module for measuring the uh, capability of organizations, a little bit more detail there. You can, based on that assessment, you can generate all these charts and you know, measure, you know, compare companies to each other or against the benchmark, or to compare a company against its old uh, benchmarks. Again, once you have this data, it's, you can generate any kind of chart you need. Um, this is just a typical example of uh, you know, working with a, with a client, where the client says, I want, the, I wouldn't use the continuous first stage with the client, but say, I want to work with someone who can deliver a, to, to this project. So you analyze the project and see what it's made of, what are the types of capabilities needed to deliver this type of project, and then you can assess the supply chain against that target. So really here, when you see 100%, it means 100% of the requirements of that specific client on that specific project. This is the difference between these different types of methods. This is very, very specific. Uh, sample project assessment based on model uses. So this is, you know, model uses, there's uh, defined 73 of them for BIM and construction all. You can find the, them and their definitions uh, if you go to the, something called bimdictionary.com. Um, there's lots of links at the end. So model uses, I'm going to spare you this. They're categorized. Uh, a couple of charts, so really here you, you can measure a, a, a project and say what are the model uses needed for that project. This project needs clash detection, needs uh, you know, uh, 2D out of 3D of course, uh, it needs asset maintenance, whatever, and it can generate a chart, you can generate a chart, you don't have to use this type of uh, you know, graphics, but to ident identify what are the model uses, and by knowing this is your target, you can then assess the capability of the team, and, and see their um, competency according to these targets. And you can see here a comparison between what the client wants and what the team can deliver. So certain areas are really low, other areas are high, and uh, in, in a perfect world, you will, you will need all these model uses required by the client to be matched by the team. So bringing it all together, this is the last uh, set of slides here. You need the method. You don't have to follow this method, but any method you, you follow will be um, uh, according to something similar. You have to start with the scoping, understand how you subdivide your organization uh, uh, based on the hierarchy I mentioned, based on the business stream, based on any kind of structure. Based on that, you conduct the assessment using uh, templates, paper templates, online tools, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It, it just needs to be structured. And based on the assessment, you do the analysis. Uh, what does the, this, this data, uh, what, what is it giving us? Um, and then based on that, you plan what you need to do. You know, for, okay, we've discovered these gaps. Now we need to plan to, to fill these gaps. Uh, you, you create these plans, and upon that, you act. You, you deliver the training, you buy the software, etc., in order to close the, the performance gap. And optionally, you measure against the, the scoping. Ha, you know, you've, you've done the planning, you've done the acting, but did the performance improve or not? You need to measure against the scope. You, you started from this, you ended with that. Is there an improvement or not? So without having these six uh, approaches, you, you can't really have accurate data to act upon. Summary, these are the same ones, and thank you. <laughs>